Welcome back to Beyond Real Estate, the podcast where we talk about everything from uh, apparently this week drugs uh, all the way to business books. We really hit the gambit of the high school lunchroom. I'm Jalen McKenna, and with me as always, my co-host Nick Gumpert, and joining us this week is hashtag the mortgage mom of three, Christina Moran. Holy cow. Uh, Christina and I had previously worked together at another mortgage business. Now she is at Cherry Creek Mortgage. Christina, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's it's our pleasure and, and everyone else is about to see why. So uh, in today's hashtag dad life though, we will be discussing how parents can effectively talk to their kids about all the hard topics um, confidently and effectively without the worry of saying something wrong or just playing crazy. Uh, and if you would like the show notes with these, uh, with this entire clip and this, all, all of what we talk about today, um, just let us know or comment by commenting below. We're going to coloradomortgagedad.com forward slash contact and just request a copy of the show notes using the contact form. So, um, yeah, Christina, first and foremost, tell everyone about your wonderful kids. Oh, well, thank you. I've got three amazing kids that keep me on my toes. I've got <laughs> a boy and girl twins that are nine and a half and an eight-year-old because twins were not enough. We thought, let's throw a third one in the mix. And um, I personally think stopping at three is the best way to go. <laughs> but some are overachievers and want to keep going. Um, and you do you, boo. I'm okay with that. My household can't handle more than three. Um, they're amazing. They keep me on my toes. They're kind, good kids. At least that's what I'm told by the schools. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're great. They they have a lot of energy. They're very social. They'll be the first to come up and ask you what your name is. How are you? How do you know my mom? Hmm. What do you like to do? Sometimes they're a little weird. Uh, let's see, my nine-year-old Logan looks into sewers to see if it's in there naturally. like it <laughs> yes naturally he has not seen the movie though he has not seen it he just loves everything stephen king he wants to meet stephen king have oh. a burger with him so <laughs> okay that's just that's just parenting so how does he know stephen king and know of it social media uh youtube youtube <laughs> So huh. a long time ago, I told him about my fear of clowns. Okay. I can't stand clowns. It was reading the book It that made me afraid of clowns. And so through talking about that, they saw a while ago when they remade It, they saw the commercial for it. And it just had him interested. And he's been begging us to see the movie. And we're like, yeah, you're going to regret it. We're not letting you see that movie. Yeah. Uh, but he's seen clips here and there of it. And uh, then there's people that make Pennywise a joke. Um, so they think it looks funny. <laughs> like, it's not funny. Like, you have no idea. There's no going backwards. So he knows of it because of YouTube. Are you sure he hasn't seen it at all on YouTube? Yeah, I'm positive. Okay. okay. <laughs> when, when you have social media around, you have to always be listening to what your kids are doing, especially YouTube, because there's no filters, there's no censoring, there's nothing. Mm -mm. So, between my husband and I, our ears are always like, what do you, turn that off, that I heard words I didn't like, change it to something else. Like, so we're always paying attention to what they're doing. Have they gotten something around us? Absolutely. Yeah, and I, th I think this is a perfect segue into today's uh, hashtag dad life topic of sensitive topics to talk about with our kids. Um, and, and I'll just come straight out and say drugs, school shootings. Um, you, you touched a, a little bit on it with maybe what's inappropriate material, whether it be movies, songs, et cetera. Um, but let's dive straight in to big elephant in the room. I think, especially these days, very, it's just in the, in the headlines everywhere, school shootings, right? And, and let's even take that into drugs. And even if Christina, especially you being a mom with eight, nine year olds, if you've had to have conversations or you're on the verge of, you're just like, need to do that one sooner than later. Um, no one rabbit hole that I, that I feel like, Hey, let's make sure we stay down this path. So uh, let's put you on the spot first. What is your opinion for when to have conversations? Let's talk about, I guess, school shootings and drugs just to start it and then take it where you want. 
Um, so first, I always like to point out, you know, every household does things differently and what we choose to do in our household is what works for us. Um, I find being a parent, it's always helpful to talk to other parents because we each have something that maybe we can learn from. Um, so I don't ever like to think that my way is the right way. Um, but my husband and I are very big on being open and honest with our kids because we think hiding things makes it worse. Now, that's such a sensitive layering topic because what's too much and when is too early? And so it's kind of an always an ongoing discussion between him and I first of what topics are we ready to discuss? What are we not ready to discuss? Or what are they bringing to us that we need to have the conversation with? Because let's face it, our kids are, are seeing more than we used to with internet, um, TikTok, you know, all the social media platforms and what other kids are saying. Because just because we censor something else doesn't mean another parent is. So we choose to be open and honest with also being sensitive to what we may not be ready to discuss. Um, I mean, I remember we were walking out of boondocks and there was, I swear they had to have been not older than 12 smoking vapes. And wow. yeah. And my kids looked at me and they're like, mom, they're smoking. Why? And I had a conversation with them and I, I said, unfortunately, it's out there and some kids think it's cool to smoke and here's why you shouldn't but you tell me what how it made you feel like what what were your feelings about it and how can I answer your questions and and so it was so uncomfortable but we had to have that conversation I couldn't just tell them just ignore it because they saw something and yeah to me it just made it worse if I told them just to ignore it yeah you can't you can't definitely you definitely can't try to shelter your kids from what they're inevitably going to see and interact and and if you kind of put up those walls and and don't come to your kids first and explain things or explain why you're kind of holding back on something um for for instance the youtube is a great example um with with our four-year-old he he wants to watch all the gamers right and boy are gamers not known for just being chill nice relax and and uh, uh, watching Clean their mouth. language. Yeah. Watching <laughs> yeah. this. So, um, we have to, we have to constantly have that, uh, that kind of discussion of like, no, you're on kids, YouTube, which is a great resource, by the way. Um, probably for younger, younger kids, uh, eight and nine year old, definitely, uh, the stuff they have on kids, YouTube, they're not gonna be interested. So that's a really hard sell, but we have to keep telling them like, no, you're, you're staying in kids, YouTube, uh, unless we can watch something with you or, or watch, you know, make, make sure it's a, a content creator that we're familiar with or know what they are going to say or how they phrase things so that they're not exposed, um, to those overtly just ridiculous things that a lot of people do to get, uh, the views and yeah, young kids going to see that and be like, oh, that guy's cool. And boy, does he curse like a sailor. So, um, yeah, on uh, Moving to the, the next thing though, of, of, so yeah, listening to, to your kids, uh, Christina pointed out there, I think that that's huge. So kind of getting their feedback on what they think, thought of the situation. Um, and then also not oversharing. There are so many people that you see that will just share something with their kids. And it, it feels like they're trying to be the cool understanding parent, but there's like the understanding parent where you're talking and asking for feedback and having a discussion with your kids. And then there's the parent that's just like, yeah, I vape in front of them and I get drunk in front of them regularly and I smoke marijuana in front of them. It's like, yeah, no one needs to know about your college days. Like no one wants to know about their parents' college days and crazy party days. So like, let's tone it down just a little bit. Nick, what are your thoughts when it comes to that kind of stuff and, and, you know, a, a approaching, um, a tough conversation, um, especially when it comes to whether drug use, nicotine use, alcohol use, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, the oversharing, Let, love your thoughts on that one. Yeah. I think in my opinion, nine and 10 is probably an age that I'll bring things up. Um, if it hasn't been brought up in some shape or form prior to just because 
I have the opinion, not having kids yet that are nine and 10 years old, um, that they will fill in the blanks accordingly. If you don't start talking about topics. Um, and I think unfortunately at a younger age, and I guess that's the age that comes to mind for me, um, Christina, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong at eight, nine, have, the, have your kids already talked about it? Alcohol, drug use or, or not yet? Well, yeah, no, wow. I have. Yeah. Yep, and, unfortunately. and like you said, Jay, it's, it, it's not that you have to spill the beans on everything, right? Because again, there's their brain is, they're not many adults. And I think that's where some people forget, right? Um, that they don't have the context that we have as adults. So we can simplify things. And I think it at least gives a reference point without expecting them to remember everything um, and say, okay, that's how you process the information. So I'm going to process it exactly the same. So I, I definitely agree that it's unnecessary to give them all information at young ages. Um, what, what else what was your second half of that question? Um, oversharing and then listening, um, to your kids as well. And, and maybe if you, you kind of want to bring us into this next kind of bit that I wanted to, uh, talk about was just reassuring your kids and in kind of how you go about, um, explaining to them that, you know, if they, if they do have, uh, those questions or if they are afraid of something or, you know, basically not making the world out to be this boogeyman and so reassuring right. that there's good things all around in this area yeah two things come to mind to to elaborate on that a little bit one i think it's important to create a safe space of some sort and a consistent space that you do talk about things is that at the dinner table like is there a rule of no phones at the dinner table to where you can converse about that to where that becomes a consistent time and place to talk about those things is it in the car after school i don't know i think for different families it, it'll vary Nonetheless, I think that's an important uh, routine to create consistency with. Um, so, so that's what comes, comes to mind there. And then, like you said, reassuring them that things that we can't predict will happen, unfortunately, but that doesn't mean it happens all the time. Yeah. And it doesn't have, mean it's inevitable um, to reassure them that how can you maybe, what's the silver lining of a bad situation? I think that's probably more important to focus on what was the good that came out of a bad situation versus just solely focusing on the bad and saying, and, and, and like you said, now that becomes their, their reality. Christina, what are your thoughts on that one? Well, I, I agree with what you said there, because not only by creating safe spaces now, right, you're allowing them to feel comfortable coming to you later about anything, um, which is crucial because you want them to have that comfort level to know that when they're going through difficult situations, which they're going to have, we've all had them, um, that they have that um, security of being able to have those open dialogues with you, uh, whether it be mom or dad. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, you know, with, when they come up on those situations that happen, they're going to have you in their mind and be thinking about those things. And when you're talking to them constantly, it'll help them to get through those situations. Cause if you avoid the topics then they're not going to know how to handle it. And then when the peer pressure happens or huh. their friends are, you know, it, they're not going to know what to do and they're going to fall victim to the peer pressure because it's hard enough as it is. And then it carries on into adulthood. I'd like to tell everyone that, or I like to tell my kids like, Hey, bullying stops when you become an adult, but it gets worse. <laughs> yeah. So you either teach them how to handle it so that they can prepare for adulthood or we avoid it. It's just, you've got to handle these situations head on so we can help our kids be the best that they can be as they get older um, and handle the difficult situations because they're never going to go away, unfortunately. It's only going to keep following you. And like yeah. you said, um, it, really quick, like you said with yes. the silver lining thing, I think that's good too because there is always something to learn. I always like to say behind every mountain you, that you climb, there could be something beautiful waiting, but if you don't climb that mountain, you're never going to know what's waiting for you. Um, you have to get through the hard times to know what good times are waiting. And that's just how life is. It's shitty sometimes, but <laughs> yeah. it's worth it. So go yeah. ahead, Jalen. I'm sorry. No, no, that, that was, that was a, a, a perfect, um, yeah, I, I love that analogy. One, you and I are in Colorado. Nick is in, uh, California, you know, 
California doesn't have as pretty of mountains, so that might be hard I'm for them to completely. You there. <laughs> Depends where you are. You leave California alone, Mr. Jalen. <laughs> Big Sur. Big Sur. Big Sur Mammoth will give you a run for your money. Oh. Yeah, seriously. Oh. Hertz, Hearst Castle. Oh, oh, geez, I have, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm, I'm just going to write these, uh, down. Okay. So, uh, I I'm from California. So you're stuck in between two Californians. Mountains, uh, mountains in Cali question mark. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Christina, I wanted you to, to kind of almost wrap us up in, with the, with the big thing here. And then, and then, um, Nick, I'll, I'll give you, uh, closing thoughts. Um, but Christina, it, it sounds like, um, you've created a good relationship with your kids where they are comfortable asking those questions. So how do you foster that with your kids, especially as they get older, uh, to make sure that when there are those tough questions that they want to ask that there is, they understand that there's that safe space versus just, you know, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay answering these questions. That's a lot different than kids actually coming to you to ask the questions. Um, constant, constant reassurance. Hey, don't forget daddy and I are here. If you don't feel comfortable talking to me, your dad is here or vice versa. And then um, leading by example, um, you forget how much they're watching everything you do. Everything. Um, so those two things to me, and I am not saying I'm not making mistakes. Let me tell you. <laughs> Woo, am I? Uh, I don't know when my parenting manual is supposed to arrive. It's not here yet. Oh. Um, but <laughs> until then, uh, you do the best that you can do and you hope that by leading by example and having those conversations, which means reassurance, I love you, I'm here for you. And I also find that when I do lose my temper, not me, I never do that, <laughs> uh, that I talk to him about why why did mommy lose her temper she shouldn't have done that but you know this also could have helped me had you done you know there's always a lesson behind it yeah so yeah how about you closing thoughts so my, my closing thoughts just to piggyback and, and christina and mentioned this earlier and it's it, communicating also with your significant other if there is a significant other I, I think that's massive because you can quickly pull in two directions i can have my uh assumption or ideas of how I want or think a conversation should happen. And then Bree or anybody's significant other could have their totally own thoughts and that don't coincide. So I know Christina touched on that, but I want to wrap up with reiterating that because, um, and then the fact of communication, uh, kind of beating the same drum. I know nonetheless, you really, people don't get in trouble with over communicating. People get in trouble when they don't communicate enough. And whether that's what their significant other or their kids. And I think, again, that's where people will naturally fill in blanks when there aren't conversations and they look somewhere else, whether it's their closest friends, their, the news, whatever it is. Um, so that's how I'll, I'll conclude mm -hmm. my thoughts with, with this segment is, is you will never be in trouble with communicating too much in that regard. Yeah. And, and Christina, um, looks like you had a, a thought there that you, you wanted to inter interject. I just wanted to say he hit the nail on the head. It is, okay. it is about mm -hmm. making sure you're partnering with your significant other if you have one. And, um, I know I've talked to a few parents where they've, sometimes your kids hit walls with listening to you and maybe looking at outside resources too. Like there's mentoring programs because coaches, things like that, sometimes hearing it from an outside source i don't know why it, it you're my mom you're supposed to love me you're my dad you're supposed to love me especially when you get into the teenagers i mean yeah, i'm sure it's it. gonna be a whole different beast <laughs> yeah so i just think there's so many resources we don't even think about till we get to the difficult times so uh but you are so right nick your your partner in crime should be always there to bounce things off as of, as well yeah and and i'll i'll um finish us up here. Sorry, Nick, I was giving you a uh, final thoughts, but something came to mind when you guys were talking about that. There's, so there's, I, I want to say five things that, uh, Dave Ramsey says makes a successful relationship with your significant other. So this pairs into one of those. And, and one of the, the first one is kids, how you're going to raise your kids, uh, finances, 
Oh boy, I can only remember three because I only got one more. Uh, and then the <laughs> final one is how far away you should live from your uh, in-laws. And so those are the those are the three of the five. I know there was two more, but yeah, those are three of the five that I think we can all agree on. If you're uh, in disagreement with your significant other, then uh, there's going to be problems. Um, but no, awesome conversation. Uh, so let's just, uh, I'm just going to quickly summarize kind of what we covered, uh, which is, so it is important for parents to talk to their kids about these, um, all these things that they're going to face in an age appropriate way. Uh, definitely reassuring your kids that they are safe to talk with you about them. Um, and if, if they do have any questions, they know that they can come to you with those. And then it's also important to actually be honest about all of these problems um, while at the same time not oversharing or almost frightening uh, the kid at that point. That's last thing that you want is to to make them afraid of everything. So um, yeah, again, if you want any of these show notes, please feel free to reach out to Nick or myself or just comment in, uh, wherever you are seeing or hearing this in the comment section below. Um, but that's all we have for this week's segment of Hashtag Dad Life. Uh, we will take a very short break when we're going to be coming back. We're going to be jumping into Real Estate Roundup, and we're going to jump into the thing that every first-time home buyer just wants to know about, and that's down payment assistance programs. We'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly when we come back right after this. 